telling the story in of Tears Head. No, I'm not. You're not. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I know it, it had matters to switch story but with the last minute. But we are mortals and events overtake us. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't know, I'm from 872, it looks like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to dedicate this story to my very good friend, the late Master Joseph of Luxton. There was a Jarl, and his name was Hakon. And he was a good man, and owned many, many steadings. All were faithful to him, because he was in truth a good man. And he had, as his closest friend, his own skull, a man named Hawker, which means hawk. And hawk he was indeed, for high flew his words, and strong flew his voice. It came time that the Jarl realized he needed to marry and have heirs. So he looked throughout the lands and found himself a woman of comeliness, whom he adored. And the time for their wedding was set, and the Jarl's Hall was made ready for the great celebration and feasting. When, suddenly, one came riding, weary, robe more dusty, and said, My Lord Jarl, your kinsman Wolfram has crashed on shore at a fjord half a day's row from here, and begs you to send him aid. Well, what Norseman would not aid Kinsler? So they took a small boat, crewed only by ten, and the Jarl, and his gall, because they were friends, went along to rescue this kinsman, although Hagan actually liked him not. But a kinsman is a kinsman, and must be saved. They drew up into the cove where they had been told and pulled ashore onto the sandy beach, but no wreckage did they see, no men, nothing. The cove came down in a U-shape, trees on all sides in the pond. And they walked up, calling the kinsman's name, and heard no answer until they were grouped at the very end, caught between the trees and the beach. And then from behind, they heard Wolfram say, I am here, my cousin. And they turned from the trees on either side, in front of where the boat went, came mercenaries, gold bought blades, to slay the What harm have I ever done you, my kinsman? that you would so attack me. No harm indeed, my Jarl, save that you are rich and I am not. Save that you have lands and I do not. Save that you have cattle and I do not. But you are unwed, and should you die, and your ship be lost forever, I will have the land, and I will have the gold, and I will have the cattle. And whether or not they may be Jarl, I care not, for I will have the riches. You do not understand the price of Jarl, said the Jarl. But if it must, so be it. And he looked, and there were fifty. And he had to. He sighed. He turned to his friend the scald and said, It seems we die today, my friend. That may be so, my Jarl. But if we are to die, let us die like heroes, singing. And his sword slid from its sheath, and he raised his voice in song, and the very clouds rolled with the thunder of Hawker's voice, as twelve men charged fifty. Now the time of God is not the time of men. In the space between two heartbeats, 
The sky began to roil with the colors that southern men called the northern lights. But we know are the Valkyries who come out to take the slave. But the time of man is not the time of God. In that space between two heartbeats, the leader of the Valkyries, Orchard, grim and beautiful, glittering in her armor of the aurora, <coughs> said, listen, my sisters. And they heard how they sing. Few men know this, for they believe that Odin sends the Valkyries to take only humans, and that is true. But if he has given them no orders, the Valkyries choose. And they listened. And Orchard said, Follow me, my sisters, and set her speed. And now we are back to the time of men. Twelve men charging fifty. And every man in that group swore that a cold wind blew past him, but the trees did not move. And every one of them swore to his dying day that the foe began to die before they closed ranks. No blow of theirs that did not tell. No blow of the foeman that was not answered. Hakon's men suddenly realized they were winning. And all around them, Fifty were falling like leaves from a dead tree, and the way to the ship went open. A day may be a good day to die, but it is a better day to live. And they were not fools. They ran to the ship. All the Halker who waited a moment and looked. And because skulls live with a foot in both worlds, he saw her. Orchard. <coughs> on her stallion, glittering with the light of the aurora, reins falling to her stirrups, grim but beautiful. And she said to him, I liked your singing, Skull. You will ride with me, but this is not that day. Now go. And being no fool, <laughs> and he clambered aboard, and they put out, rowing the sea, and they looked back, and not a living man stood on that beach, save one, Wolf. And all the men could see him running, but knew not from what, save Hawker, who saw Orchard riding him down, rip his soul from his body with her spear and fling it into the winds of the night where it will vanish forever with one despairing cry. And they rode home and Halker sang them all the way and above them until daylight and the dark showed was the royal glory of the Valkyrie. So this I say to you, my friends and kinsmen, when your time comes to meet that grim and glorious writer, you go to her singing, for that way lies glory. And I tell you that this is a wonderful life and well worth the celebrating, even the leaving of it.